Now I would like to share some examples of the Ashwini Nakshatra. So as we talked about in the previous lecture, Ashwini, it literally means possessing horses, being endowed with horses. We have to imagine what, was, what life was like before cars and airplanes. Horses were like these heavenly vehicles. They were these divine vehicles that moved you and propelled you with a divine heavenly like power and swiftness. And this star is about getting, like again, the Shakti is about reaching things quickly, being swift and light and fast like a horse. And so we're going to see that examples of people who are really strong minded, really sharp, swift people. And this is also a star that makes like whatever planet activities are involved with it, you learn really quickly. You know, the moon grows things really quickly in this star. It's a quick learner. Um, some more just quick uh, reiterations of keywords, you know, swiftness, problem solving ability, quickly solving problems, power, mental power, fixing things, being a problem solver, handyman, um, surgery, uh, travel, twins, uh, medicine, and this is where healers come in. This is a big star for healing because what is healing but solving problems? Um, and fighting for causes, training, empowerment, um, being very skilled and yet overlooked because the Ashwin, the Ashwins were overlooked and weren't given their share of the hobbies and the sacrifices. Um, okay, so Here's a great example of that is Maisie Williams, the actress who played Arya Stark in Game of Thrones. I touched on this in the previous talk. For those of you who haven't watched it, this maybe isn't going to be the best example and it is a violent show, so I'm not saying um, you need to go and watch that show, but for those of you who've seen it, this main character is, no, she's not the main character at first, but she becomes one of the main characters. She's incredibly overlooked at first, just like the Ashwins. Um, she ends up being a very, very prominent person, um, a great warrior. She basically ends up becoming like Ashwini incarnate. So we see that the, Le the Ascendant is Libra um, and the Ascendant is uh, Chitra. So no, that's not related. But the Ascendant Lord, which represents you in your life. So the Ascendant Lord for her is Venus. And it goes to the seventh house, which makes sense for her to be an actress. Venus is not just the Ascendant Lord, but also the Atma Karaka, because as the, as the planet with the most degrees. So the Nakshatra that's your Lagna Lord and Atma Karaka fall in, if they fall in the same one, that's going to be prominent. And for her, it's Ashwini. So she is Ashwini Nakshatra, because she, her ruling planet and her Atma Karaka are there. Your ruling planet is your body, too. So it's like her body is even like Ashwini. What I say, but Ashwini has a, is very youthful, you know what I mean? So she became famous as a youth. The world saw her in the seventh house. The, world, the, the seventh house is the public, the world seeing you. The world saw her as a youth, you know? And Ashwini means endowed with horses. Well, she is famously on horseback in this show a lot. And she just looks cool doing it, you know? And she really looks confident and she was a great, um, she really did a great job. Oh, and by the way, uh, I've talked about this before, like in my YouTube videos and stuff, but you acting is ruled by Mercury, um, but it also requires Venus because of making you an entertainer. And acting is something that, like you can't play a role that you don't have the karma to play in your life, that you don't have the karma for in your chart. So no actor or actress can ever play something that isn't really in their chart. And I've made a case for this in previous videos. You can watch on YouTube channel or whatever. Um, so that's why it's fun to read the charts of actors because you'll see their characters in their chart. Isn't that amazing? And we're seeing it with her having her Lagnesh and Atmakarka are the two main self factors in Ashwini. And then the sun is in Ashwini. Oh, the other main just universal self factor is the sun and it's there. And another thing that's really fascinating is that uh, Ashwini, yeah, like it has to do with um, medicine and healing and rejuvenation because uh, of a number of reasons. The Ashwins are basically just the physicians uh, and the healers of the gods. And 
they, like I said, they made this sage youthful and young and beautiful again, so, um, mainly so that he could please his, his wife, you know, and um, he didn't even care because he was a sage, of course, but they, uh, they did that in exchange for a rise in their status, you know, in their share. So it is about that. And in this show, um, she, this character, Arya Stark, she loses her vision at one point and then she gets it restored. She, she heals and rejuvenates herself. Um, so that's really kind of cool. And, you know, vision and sight even kind of just kind of symbolic of like youth. And so she has all these archetypes of like youth and rejuvenation and training. Oh yeah. Training, you know, Ashwini is the star of just training. It's a star of remember a community, taking a community, a group of men and then turning them into an army. And so she does that throughout the show. She becomes a great sword fighter. Even though she's a girl, she's overlooked at first amongst the family of the uh, House Stark. Um, they think their heroes are going to be found in these other characters, and then they die really quickly. And then she ends up, you know, becoming a great warrior and a great hero. So she's overlooked, you know, and she trains and she learns quickly all throughout the show. Um, really just strong-minded. Remember, the, the horse symbolizes power. Horse-headed, Ashvini, means powerfully minded. Um, okay, so here's the chart of Joseph Campbell. Joseph Campbell, also a Libra, also has, uh, well, he has his ruling planet Exalted in the sixth, and it's Venus, and he was a master of mythology, but he also has Atmakarika in Ashwini. He actually was a marathon runner and an athlete um, when he was younger. And he had like, he said that he had like really deep, you know, spiritual experiences running marathons and going into just deep states. Um, and he was a very wise person. And he read like pretty much every, he read like all the myths of the entire world and wrote a Harvard, like he was a Harvard academic. And he wrote, um, I guess his, whatever you call it, like your Harvard dissertation or your main thing. His main thing of his whole study was on comparative mythology and finding how there were all these universal truths within all the myths around the world, kind of like astrological truths, you know? And he is really the, he's really probably the one single-handed greatest master of mythology I've ever found or came across. I think it's pretty much undisputed. Um, and he is the guy who came up with the idea of the hero's journey and everything. And so again, Mars is his Atmakarika. Mars is an Aries, the hero, the warrior. And it's an Ashwini, which again, the, Ashv the Ashvins are like the knights, you know? They're like the knights and warriors of the Nakshatras and they... You know, they, they, come to the, they come to a village to train, you know, to train the village and, and make an army. They're the only starts about building an army and growing an army. You know, like I said, the moon wants to create and grow different things in the different 27 stars. And here it wants to grow training and grow military and merit and an army and grow warriors and competitions. Like I said, Ashvini is a star of uh, like competitions and winning them going to tournaments and winning them and stuff like that um so he was he did that as a as an athlete but he also um i guess he just kind of devoured the myth like you know the the mythological realm um and he he created kind of like his own uh through his powerful mind and all that, like we talked about basically came up with the idea of the hero's journey which is a universal concept now and he explained why, you know, all myths um, and even movies are basically uh, like kind of coming off of universal patterns, which we actually find the Zodiac. And I've actually written an entire book about that, which um, hopefully I'll publish soon. So this is a good example of, uh, of um, Ashwini and the powerful minded person. I mean, he read, he's one of the most well-read people on the planet, Harvard academic highly inspiring and it's in the seventh house probably hinting at leaving a public legacy for the world because the seventh house is the public and also your legacy you'll leave for the world also jupiter there and it being an aries sign of the hero makes sense that he would his legacy would be to leave this concept of the hero's journey which has inspired many people including myself this is the chart of nikola tesla Tesla had his ascendant in Aries and in Ashvini, 
and he also had Rahu in Ashwini. So it's like he would experience some of the good sides of Ashwini with his Lagna and his path there, but then also with Rahu there, who would experience some of the difficulties of this star. Now, um, his ruling planet Mars goes to the seventh house, which is again the house of the public, leaving a public legacy, but it's also the house of distant lands and foreign travel and international travel. He was born uh, in Croatia and he traveled west. And isn't it cool how Libra is the sign of the west and Aries is the sign of the east? And he moved to America and he a lot of the time he was in America, he was overlooked the entire time. He was completely overlooked, just like we've talked about with the Ashvins. And you'll see his ruling planet Mars is actually shaming the moon. And so his moon is ashamed by Mars. And he did get a lot of you know, humiliation and shame. When he went to work for Thomas Edison, Thomas Edison put him to work digging ditches. And he told him he would pay him this huge amount. He just straight lied to him. And Nikola Tesla was just this complete opposite type of person, you know, uh, with the strong K2 Mars moon stuff, very uptight, very strong in his concepts and his mind, and, you know, very strong-minded like Dashwini qualities, also because of this ridiculous Mercury Atmakarika and Gemini too, he's just a genius, brilliant person. Rahu can also make you ingenious, like brilliant and new and cunning and innovative, surprising ways. I think that had to do with his pioneering inventions as well. But yeah, because of this Mars shaming the moon, um, Mars K2 moon shame of Ashta, which you have to learn just the Lajitati of Ashta is to, do, to be able to read Nikshatras, you have to be able to read all, know as many techniques as possible because they're all going to plug in. So, and I'm, what I'm trying to do in this course is show you guys how just reading charts in general and then plugging in Nikshatras, how well it works. So for him, yeah, he did have a lot of shame um, that he experienced with Edison and with, uh, you know, just kind of being like overlooked, like we said with the Ashwins. And that has to do with this shame of Ashta, but we also see it with this Rahu in Ashwini that he would be fated to be overlooked like the Ashwins. Um, and so there's kind of an interesting connection there. And then Jupiter and Rahu also can make you have like a really innovative gift to share with the world as long as the rest of the chart's strong. Um, so yeah, he was a stunning man, like a dazzling man. And I want to use the word stunning and dazzling because his Lagna Lore was in Chitra, his moon and Ketu, all was in Chitra. So Tesla is actually an even better example of Chitra, really. He's a great example of Chitra when we get to that star. These, that is the star of the craftsmen and uh, engineering and building its deity is literally Vishvakarman, the, the engineer of the gods, you know, and he's the reason that we have, like, he engineered so many things, uh, but he also did it in this just powerful minded Ashwini way where he never created a blueprint, his entire tenure of inventing, he never created a blueprint, he envisioned everything out in his mind down to the tiniest details so that he never needed a blueprint. When he started to build something, it always worked first try. How crazy is that? Um, he was an Atlantean soul, if you ask me. He was an angelic soul from a higher level. Um, and so, yeah, this dazzling, stunning man traveled across the world to a new land, a new community, and was shamed. He also kind of shamed others, too, because he had high standards, you know, and was very uptight and rigid about things. So there was, I'm sure it was part of his karma to experience it. Uh, but he went to a new community, a new village. You see the Ashvini quality of going to a village, he joined Edison's army in a sense, but he was he failed and because of the Rahu there, it didn't go well. But he didn't give up. Even without any support, he kept working. Um, and now he's famous and now he's recognized. So, you know, I think that showed a lot of the uh, strong K2 Mars person. You know, a strong person with K2 really close to Mars is a real fighter and a warrior and doesn't give up easily. Okay, cool. So that's another example of Ashwini strong-minded, horse-headed. I mean, Tesla's one of the most genius people on the planet uh, who's lived in modern times, at least. Um, okay, thanks, you guys. Hope you enjoy that. More to come.